because there is 15. So I'm going to explain what that 15 means. 15 out of 30 correct in multiple choice for answering the ABC. Okay, 15 out of 30. Um, the, the trick here, especially when you take the test where everything's in the same place, is deciding that this is what you're supposed to do. Because this is a bino binomial experiment that we're supposed to use this formula. We're simplistic, we're supposed to use this formula. Um, so we just have to recognize that it's the same thing over and over. So what thing are we doing over and over? <coughs> No, I mean like uh, what real world thing is happening? Picking this uh, uh, letter from yeah. yeah. So we're guessing at a multiple choice. Question. How many times are we doing that at all? Thirty. Doing it thirty times. Okay. So that would mean that n is thirty. Okay. What do we call fifteen? Okay. K. K is the number that, or the, the letter that we give to the number of successes. Fill in that place with 15. Uh, P would be the probability of a success, meaning the probability that you will, when you guess, guess correctly. Which is 0 0.25. Okay, 0.25. There are four questions, only or four possible uh, choices, and only one of them is correct, so 0.4, 0.25. And we call this Q or 1 minus P. Right, it's the, the rest of the probability. The probability that you will not succeed, which is how much? 0.75 must be the rest of it. So there's one thing, if, that, if that's not possible, if, if it doesn't just break down into succeed and fail, there's other stuff that could happen. Then we're not talking about <coughs> binomial experiment, we're not talking about using this formula. But if it's just heads or tails, yes or no, succeed, fail every time we do it, and we're talking about this formula. The formula I'm talking about here is N, C, K, is P uh, to the K, times 1 minus P, or sometimes what's it called, Q, to the N minus K power. So that'd be the total number of trials, this would be the successes, of course, K would be the successes uh, in this case as well. P would be the probability of success, one minus P would be the probability that you would fail. The rest of the world would have to rest of the world because you don't get what you want. So in this case it would be 30C15, 0.25 to the 15th power, minus 0.75 to the 15th power as well, because 30 minus 15 is 15. So let's break this down. Why is this? I mean, you, if you can pick apart all those pieces, then fine, plug it in, run the numbers, you'll get the right answer. But uh, if it's helpful at all, which I'm sure it will be, to understand why all the pieces of this formula exist, let's start with this one. Where does this come from? Where do we get 0.25 times itself 15 times and 0.75 times itself 15 times? Well, we're doing this experiment. total of 30 times, and we want to get, um, we want to get, uh, say, just for simplicity's sake, the first 15 correct. So on this first guess, what's the probability that you will get that correct? That you will get that, that single answer correct. Two five. Okay, so if we were just to answer one multiple choice question, the probability of getting that question right is 0.25. But what would be the probability of getting two in a row correct? 0.125. How'd you get that? 0.25 times 0.25. Okay. And if we were to get a third correct, we would multiply by 0.25. If we were to get a fourth correct, by 0.25, and if we were to go down the line and get 15 correct, we would multiply 0.25 by itself 15 times. That's where this comes from. 0.25 times 15. In any arrangement where there's 15 correct, 
is going to be 15.25. Does that make sense? Somewhere along in there, when we multiply all the probabilities together, there will be 15.25 to multiply together. So we definitely are going to have 0.25 times itself 15 times. And the other 15 times, we're going to fail. We're going to have a probability of failing of 0.75. 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75
So some guy who has a crazy uh, weird name on uh, the Sacramento Kings, the basketball team, made 92.7% of his free throw shots. So that means how, like, do you think the next time he goes up to make his free throw shot, it's probably going to go in? Most likely. Yeah, so, you know, we're kind of making a probability out of, of some data that we collected. Okay, based on the 2003-2004 da- uh, season, NBA season, um, he, he looks like he's almost 93% likely to make any particular shot that he takes, free throw shot. So we'll say that that's the probability that when he steps up to the line to take a shot, that's the probability he'll make it. All right. um, so this is a binomial experiment. He does something, we're going to have him do something many times in a row. Ask the question, how likely is it that he'll succeed k number of times? Calculate that probability. So, what is the experiment? What is it? Is it that he's doing repeatedly? Taking shots. He's going to take shots. Um, he's going to take how many shots? In the total. Fifteen. Fifteen total. So that'd be n. The total number of trials that we run. The total number of tries that we take is going to be n. And k is ten. That's the number of times that we succeed. K will always smaller number and will always be a larger number. What's the probability that he will succeed on any given free throw? 0.927. What's the probability he won't succeed? 0.073. So really unlikely that he'll miss, but it's still possible. get the and you watch me use my calculator as you can do it yourself. How big a probability is 0.0029? Big or small? It's small. It seems strange, though, doesn't it? I mean, don't you think it's, it seems strange. He's really good at making free throws, right? Well, 90% um, success. So doesn't it seem strange that there's such a small probability that it'll make 10 of 15? Yeah? So he has to make exactly 10. That's right. That's the key. We, he has to make exactly 10. What do you think, like if we said, what's the probability that he'll make 11, do you think that'd be more likely or less likely? More likely. Probably more likely, since he makes 90%, or makes every shot 90% of the time, 92.7% of the time. Don't you think it'd be more likely he'd make closer to 90% of the next 15 throws? Yeah, probably. Like the, the ratio of his uh, successful free throws to his unsuccessful free throws should come out to about 93%. Right? So it's probably most likely that he'll make around 93% of his shots. What's 93% of 15? Uh, 13.95. 13.95. So between, probably since it's 13.9, it might be more likely that he makes 14 than 13. So that's where it would be find the most likely scenario that he would make 13 or 14 shots. Because we're calculating the exact probabilities, the probabilities of exact numbers. Um, the probability that he would make 10 and then miss five is unlikely because he's so good. So that's just something to keep in mind when you get a probability that you think is, probably think is too small. All right, 
Any other questions? Yep. Number 24. Yeah, I just like was trying to do it. Okay, so if we go back to 22, instead of getting 15 right, we want to get 26 correct. So this is 15, this is 26. But we're still 25% likely to answer correctly. We're still 75% likely to answer incorrectly. We're still answering 30 questions, but this is not. It's 26. This is not 15. It's 26. This clearly is not 15. Instead of 15, it would be 4. And that's it. That's all that changes. We are only 26 correctly, well, that's going to be 0.25 times itself 26 times, 27 times itself 4 times, times however many ways there are to get 26 out of 30 questions correct. Like that's what they did on the answer key. Yeah. That's, that's not what, what I got. Yeah. Um, I had a question. Once you had um, it down that formula of the whole n c k k, would order of how you multiply the matter? Um. No. I mean, like if you calculated this and then this and then this is like three separate numbers. Yeah. I knew it wouldn't matter with four you multiply. It's weird. How's that weird? Because I did that on my calculator and it came out with something different. It might have been set like a different mode or something. Mode or maybe parentheses or something. Oh, well. something like But yeah, I, I mean, as long as you recognize that the only place where multiplication is happening is here and here. So we have three numbers to find. So if we find those three numbers, it doesn't matter what order we multiply them in. Figure out what happened. Okay. Um, and you know, it didn't take a lot to switch out this 15 for a 26. This 15 for a 26. This 15 for a 4. Right? 30 minus 26 is 4. So with a little bit of work, we could just replace this with every number between 0 to 30. Do all those calculations, find all those probabilities, uh, and make what's called a probability distribution. Where like 20, let's see, 26 is right here. Really, really small probability. And we're probably more likely to answer about a fourth of these answers correctly. That's probably going to be the largest probability we see since we are 25% uh, likely to answer everything correctly. Somewhere around uh, uh, like seven, eight questions right, correctly out of 30. So somewhere around there would probably be the biggest probability. And after that, we're going to see a big drop off. Probability that we get all 30 correct. It's like fairly even a rectangle that we draw. We just do this tiny, tiny thing. Um, but if we calculate all these probabilities, we put the little rectangles there. Histogram and see how that 
distribute that? How much the probability is for any given possibility? You just take a lot of run all the Yeah. Although, it wouldn't take too long. Here's what we could do. Once, look at the things that stay the same. 30 would stay the same. And um, 0.25 would stay the same. 0.75 would stay the same. And we could just let this be like a variable. And then I'm thinking about using a computer or a calculator to have, have it do this work for us. So if we make a calculator and make a function out of it, we're always going to do 30C something. We'll do 30CX, right? And then we'll have the calculator plug in X and see what it comes up with. OK, then we're going to multiply it by uh, 0.25 to the, to the what? Also x. It's, these, these two numbers are going to be the same, right? This one and that one. The x power times 0.75. It's a little bit tricky to the what power. Maybe 30 minus x power. So 30 minus x. So now once you decide what x is going to be, then the calculator does the rest of the work, calculates the probability. We can go into the table just plug in the numbers that we want to use. Like, what's the probability that we get none correct? Actually, it's not too, too low of a probability, right? Which is 0, 0, 0, 1, 8. What about 1 correct, 2 correct, 3 correct, 4 correct, 5 correct? See, it doesn't take long after we do that, after we make that uh, little formula that it can follow. It keeps getting more and more likely that we'll get 6 correct. Uh, let's Go back up here and go to seven correct. That's even more likely. Eight correct. A little Most less likely. So we see it kind of peak at seven, which isn't surprising because seven is around a fourth of 30. You should get about a fourth of the questions correct at random. And we can just keep going nine, 10, and it starts to trail off. And we get to 30, all 30 of them correct. Very, very unlikely. Point 18 zeros and a nine. And you can do that with, with anything. Once you know what n is and what p is and what 1 minus p is. How do you get to the point where you enter the function? The you press this y equals button here. Oh, OK. Thank you. And this will let you enter any function you want. Imagination is, is the only limiting factor. And large and so how do you get to display all of the videos? To display you push the numbers? Second, second graph to mm -hmm. the table. You want to get that little table you see yeah. in yellow? Not that we really have a need with the kinds of problems that I'm having to do to, to create a function and plug in a bunch of numbers. But if we're curious, but we could. We could go back, we could do the other problem, the uh, the basketball problem. Change the numbers around. Now it's 15 and x and x and, uh, and 15 minus x, and this is 0 0.927, 0 0.073. So we change this to 31. 2 x. Point 927. You say you put it 31? Yes. What did it say? If, if you go all the way down to 31 on, on here, it's 34. For that error? No, just a 0%. Oh. Very nice. Um, Can your graph is normal? Like both do that? I don't think so because like the numbers that we you would use with uh, NCR are whole numbers. And yeah. For it to graph only on whole numbers would be kind of impossible. Well, it would be like a scatter plot. Yeah, yeah. It, I guess depending on who programmed the calculator, it could be a scatter plot, or the calculator could say, look, you want me to graph at a single point. Point doesn't actually, like, you can't see a point. Well, you can't see the line either when you draw. Like, when you graph something, technically, you shouldn't be able to see that line. Right, but then so somebody just said, hey, calculator, it's all right. 
line. Now you shouldn't be able to really see a line. We're just going to go ahead and draw lines so these students can visualize these functions. So graphing is kind of impossible and useless. Mm -hmm. right. Useless, but kind of impossible. But are there any functions that you could see on a line because they like create a swath or something? Some thickness to it? Yes. That's a good question. I would have to think about that for longer than half a second. Um, so something Gordon said made me think of this. Your calculator might be set so that you have to go down, 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 down through all the numbers. You can change that. You can change that with second table set, table setup. And then go down to the independent variable. That's x. x is independent and y is dependent. And put ask meaning you can enter the numbers that you want to enter. So we can go here, how likely is it out of 15 shots that he'll make zero of them? Not very good, yeah, that's really unlikely. Wait, where's the pass? Okay, so that he'll only make six is, is really unlikely. Seven, eight, ten. Our, that's a probability that we already calculated. Okay, still uh, not very likely that that'll happen. What about 11? It's more likely 12. More likely 13, even more likely. So on the test, could we create a function uh, and do it, have the calculator do it for us? Sure. The calculator's already doing it for you. Right? It's like you're, if you're not using the function part of the calculator, you're just using the main screen. The only difference is, if you're not saying x right here, you're just saying what x is, you're saying the actual number. Mm -hmm. right? So, unless you have to actually uh, calculate Maybe two different probabilities for the same scenario. Like in your homework, if you, when you calculated both of those things for 15 and for 26, yeah. that might have been It might have been easier to create a function yeah. instead of a right. doing it twice. Right. Uh, so on the test, if it asks for like the same function, like use two or three times. Mm -hmm. and use yeah, if it, if it said uh, answer these five questions so about that, this, this yes. problem. Right. You can create a function, function from the food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a good idea. I do that when I grade tests because I just take the number that you missed away from the total and divide that by the total. And so I just have to calculate it that. Can we create a function for the quadratic formula? Yeah, that's a thing. In, fact, in my calculator for my uh, for my high school days, I have a program because of quadratic quadratic formula. If we have time, let me create a function. Try it. It's been a long time since that program I calculated. Um, right. So it's even more likely that he'll make all 15 shots than he'll just make 10 of them. But it's most likely that he'll make 14 shots. You see that probability climbing from 11 to 12 to 13 to 14 is the most likely because 14 is around 92%, 93% of 15 shots. Well, okay, that was fun for me. At least two, maybe more. That makes sense. Any other questions? I almost asked you if you had questions. Backed off. Right, if there's no questions, then you have a piece of paper, please. things where we do the same thing over and over and over with a probability of success and a probability of failure? Yeah. Okay. What is it that we are doing over and over and over? Asking people, Asking people a question. Okay. That sounds good. Um, is there a probability, like is there just two possibilities when we ask this question? Yes. What are the two possibilities? They're on that puts or they're not. They're on that puts or they're not. Okay. Um, and the last thing that's kind of a, almost a given, but are each of the things, each of the times that we ask a question of somebody, 
Are those all independent? Which basically means if somebody answers yes or no, does that affect the probability down the line that someone will answer yes or no? No. No. So those three things tell us it's time to use the binomial experiment formula. And let's call it Q this time. Okay, Q is just the probability that you will not succeed. All right, so how many times are we doing this experiment? 100 times. 100 times, that would be N. Good. How many times do we want to succeed? 35. 35 times. And each time we attempt this question, what's the probability that we will be successful? 30%. 30%, very good. Because 30% of Households are using the internet for this purpose, so the probability that we call someone at random and say that they, they say they're using the internet for Netflix is 30%. So 0.3. So 0.3 to the 35th power. What's the probability that they won't be using the internet for Netflix? 0.7. 0.7 to the 65th power. Now, it is pretty likely that they won't be using the internet for Netflix, but it's still pretty astonishing at 30% at peak hours, so like when people are getting home from work and maybe after dinner and that kind of thing, 30% of all internet usage is support one thing. Is that a real statistic? Yeah. Uh, I believe it was a Nielsen study that I found that had that statistic. It also said that 58% of people have that. 58% of, of Americans. That's a lot. Netflix is pretty great. It is pretty great. We, I mean, my wife and I, we watch it every every night as we're going to bed. We watch the house. Watch it a little bit. So, that's pretty crazy. Maybe may counting just bandwidth. That's a lot of bandwidth just to, to stream, say, a, a show or a movie. But yeah. that's more bandwidth than it takes to look at Netflix or at, uh, at Facebook that, so if it's counting bandwidth and not like households, maybe that's kind of skewing the data. But anyway, there it is, right there. If we, if we do this, then we'll have the answer. Anybody do that? Apologies should have had these try. What do we get? These try. Point. 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 Zero four seven. I got some sort of Okay. Everybody got? Didn't round, round up. Didn't round up. That's fine. Not a big round up. Rounding anyway. One hundred. Let's see. Thirty-five times. Two the So each one of these questions are yield four points. Yes. Point seven to the six. Zero four seven. If you round up. When we do the test, before you put that in and this, yes, you'll put on there. I will. Okay, that's why I didn't do so because I forgot that. I forgot that. Such a poor job. Forgot. Right there. Oh. I wrote it up there. I didn't see it. Gotta put in big letters. Okay. I'll do that next time. You can just put it like on the board right here and just like big massive letters. It'll be on your test, so that should be big enough for you to see. Yeah, I'll do it on my test. Alright, so here's a, maybe a simpler example, definitely a simpler example. We're just rolling a die. We are doing that 32 times and we want to succeed 12 times. So what is N? 32, that's the number of times we do the experiment. K is? Well, uh, P. One six, because the way we define success is getting a five. Now, if we want to do get an even number, the probability is different. If we want to get uh, a prime number, if we want to get a number that's less than three, like all these things have different probabilities. And what is the probability that we won't succeed? I call it Q or I call it 1 minus P. It's just the probability that you won't succeed. So this one N C K P K R minus P to the N minus K. N is 32. C is 12. P is 1 sixth. 3 is to the 12th power. 1 sixth to the 20th power. So many times we're going to fail.
somebody supposed to leave right now? It's probably what they're calling now. Hello? Okay, so one sixth to the twelfth and five sixths to the twenty fifth. Questions? Anything? It's just be math related. It would take 15 minutes, right?